presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you want 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great week, folks. Accept others the way they are. You cannot change other people. To try to change them to fit what you want them to be is like trying to change a dog into a cat or a cat into a horse. They are what they are and you are what you are. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 302, NASDAQ is down 69, s and up 10. Gold, gold contract up $14.10, trading at 2030. You get the silver market down 12 cents, 24 dollars, three cents an ounce. Late sweet crude up four dollars, 85 cents, 80 dollars, 51 cents a barrel, notes and bonds. A 10-year note, up 16 ticks, trading 115.13. The 30-year up 24 at 131.29 in King Dollar. King Dollar down 411 ticks, trading 102.094. The euro is at 108. The yen is at 132. And the British pound is at 124 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at that. Well, let's go into the futures first and see where we stand here. You've been in a small consolidation all day long inside the S&Ps. There we go. So, what we had, the thing that's intriguing with the S&P right now, we'll see what it's got. It actually, from this morning, that, that's a high volume low that's laying out there at the low. So, We'll see if it wants to make a run back down there. If it does, that's a 21-point run downside. You know, it, it's never, it hasn't been tested. We came down twice, you know, didn't have a lot of volume. Then we spiked higher. You know, you had some volume. We spiked higher with 21,000, but the 21,000 was going at the 43,000. So that is game, that, that high-volume low that's laying out there. That is on the short-term basis. Um, if we take a look at this, you got to remember, this is a four-day work week. Uh, this week, you have Good Friday, the markets are closed, and last Friday, what did happen, see that expansion of volume right there? Well, your swing point had 72 million shares. You took that out with 112, so that's telling me that that high that's established out there on the 2nd of February's game, once again, we're right next to it. I mean, it's 418, You're, we hit that 411 today. NDX 100, we take a look at the NDX. We have an inside day in the NDX out here today, so it really doesn't tell you much. You get, you don't, you don't have any buyers, you don't have any sellers, but the NDX did break higher. Now it broke higher with lighter volume, but the bottom line is that uh, we take this and put this back a little bit. I suspect, you know, on the NDX, the Qs, the three. I must. That'd be interesting, man. 334 is game. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the next swing point, you know. And 318, oh, this would be interesting here. So the range, getting in the higher range is right, it, it's crawling in there right now. Because we're at 319, 318.36 gets you in that higher range. But I'd want to see it push further into that range to say that, okay, we, we are in that range, we want to move. Gold, gold contract is in a high-end consolidation out here. Um, you know, we've been here, though, for almost two weeks. Well, we have been here for two weeks, five, ten, a little over two weeks. Um, you get up. We hit a high today of 2008, 
You get a low of 16, uh, 1965. You're down 178,000 contracts. We'll see where that shakes out. But when you actually do still look at the equities, folks, if we bring up the GDX, um, you know, bottom line is that it's going into that high and, you know, no, it's picking up speed. Yeah, it is picking up speed. Yeah, that's good. No, the GDX is picking up speed. It needs a little bit more, but it's picking up speed. There's no doubt about it. Notes and bonds. Notes and bond market, folks. We have the note and bond market out here. You have higher price, lower yield. You know, this note and bond market, it looks to me like this whole thing's uh, topped out. Uh, so we're up 16 ticks. You're down 140,000 contracts out here. Now, it would be amazing if this is an ABC up because what we did, we only did a 0.382 retracement from the run from the low of February all the way up. So you do a 0 0.382 retracement, uh, <laughs> and that that is a strong market, folks. Okay, a 5.0 retracement, you know, you know, it can go either way. A 0 0.382, that's a market that wants higher price. And we go to the dollar. We take a look at the dollar, and that's what's giving this market room out here today, no doubt. You can take a look at this dollar out here. Dollar didn't hold price this morning, not breaking its lows yet. But the bottom line is that the last low last week was 102. 915 and uh, no 101,915 and we've hit 101,982 thus far. And then if we get over to the oil market, you had uh, OPEC plus uh, bring cut production by a million gallons, million barrels a day rather. And this baby's, you know, it's it's interesting. It hasn't got over the top of the consolidation. At the top of the consolidation is 82.64. We've hit 81.69. So this is going to be intriguing because if it made it over the top of the consolidation, then you're, you're talking some real action here. You don't make it over that top, particularly because what you have is that there's some volume in this thing today, as there should be, because there's plenty of folks, I'm sure, that were caught in the wrong side of this. But you can see most times when you get that close, what you don't like to see is a gap like this, then a huge amount of volume, because it's almost like, Oh, you ran out of gas right before you got to the swing point. But we'll see how that shakes out, you know, tomorrow, next couple of days. Because what does happen is that we're in window dressing right now. You get a shot week uh, ahead of us. You know, bottom line, I, I, can see, I can still see more buying coming in. We look at some of the higher volume equities out here today. Um, Tesla's down 13 bucks. You get uh, Intel up 23 cents. Advanced Micro up $1.90. We get uh, Amazon off a of buck ninety. Let's see, Exxon. Oh, yeah, look at that. Exxon's up seven dollars. Seven dollars. Oh my God! Look at let's look at this. XOM. That's something nice to wake up in the morning. Wow. Yep. So the high on Exxon was uh, one nineteen sixty three. Right now you're at one sixteen eighty. Um, so, as as I've <laughs> said. Oh, the oil market loves consolidating, folks, and it's a monster consolidation, huge consolidation. Stay right there, folks. Come back with our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 327. NASDAQ is down 61. S&P's up 12 and a half. We'll come right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 318. The Nasdaq's down 63. S&Ps are up 12 and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an amazing newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You see it on the right-hand side. You can get it for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So the bottom line, you can test drive it. It works for you. Fabulous. If for some reason it doesn't, guess what? 29th day, you just say, okay, you know, until next time. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, you know, I, uh, I I just checked just before I came on the air to see what time the game started tonight. Yes. 920. 920. 920. I, 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 that's way past my bedtime. Me too. I know. Uh, Bummer. Uh, yeah, because that so, shot at the end was phenomenal, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. You know, what what a, really, what a game. I know. Uh, you know, and, and, and for a game to end like that, look, you don't, you know, whichever team you're pulling for, it's either good or bad. But but as just simply a sports enthusiast, how great was that? Totally. Not that, and, not that they lost, you know, but because uh, I was obviously pulling for them. But how great of a game was that? Oh, no, there's no doubt. And, folks, if you didn't see it, there was no time left. The ball was in the air. San Diego State one by one. They were down yeah. 14. And the thing I just think about, Steve, the pressure that these basketball players must be in is insane. I mean, uh, I, everything but, is like down down to 30 seconds, 60 it, seconds. It, it, it is, but the talent the talent is really good. Yeah. Uh, I think the games has been it's been one of the more fun uh, seasons I think to to watch. Um, if you watched any of the college basketball during the year, you during the year you saw all kinds of upsets as well. So it's not really that surprising right. out here. But um, I imagine that the game is on at nine twenty. I don't know if it was always scheduled for that, but maybe because it's a San Diego team playing and they want to get the uh, oh, right. you know the TV revenue. Um, well, everyone on the East Coast is gonna be asleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we I'll anyway. watch a little. I'll watch a little bit. I'll of say, it, no, I. I as soon as I hit that couch, I know I'll try to watch it, but I know what's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, I thought we'd talk about the S&P. Really, a couple different things here. Uh, so, this chart here that we're taking a look at, we've looked at it in the past. Very appropriate now, as you were talking about on Friday. We had some swing points taken out with volume up there. It looks like we should be headed higher. If we take a look at the S&P 500, we can clearly see that we are in the favorable seasonal cycle. Now, folks, the red vertical line, that shows us where we're at as of today. Some other interesting 
interesting uh, data that these folks here from CSNX are providing. Like, if you ever want to know for a 95-year period of time, what day is the worst day of the year for the S&P 500? It is clearly Mondays. But Wednesdays, those are have been, over, over on average, have been the best performers, followed by Friday and then Tuesday. The other thing, if we take a look at the average return by month, um, you know, we had a decent March. April is one of the stronger performing months inside of the S&P 500. The most, uh, the, the strongest month over a 95 year period has been July, followed by December and just right behind it is uh, is April. So we're in a favorable seasonal cycle. We had some volume come into the market on Friday. I think that we mark the market does move higher in through the early part of uh, May out here. So that's the S&P 500. If we take a look at the monthly, so these are monthly charts here, Tom, for the NDX and the semis. And the one thing that I noticed was that both of those two indices closed above the February high. That's a bullish message out here. The second thing, folks, if you're if you're looking at these charts, watch us on Tiger TV, you'll see a green squiggly line. That's referred to as the oscillator and change line. Now, the cool thing about it, when it's green, it's a, it's a positive indication. But when price is above it, it's very bullish. So we have, from a monthly standpoint, a very bullish outlook right now inside the NDX 100 and the SOX. And as you know, and as you've taught us, um, you know, those two instruments will typically lead the markets higher. So whereas the other indices hadn't uh, closed above uh, the uh, green asset and change line on the monthly basis. These two did. So that suggests to me that the market should move higher. If we're looking for a price target, the Dow should target the top of its descending trend. So this is kind of interesting because, you know, we've had nice market rallies out here. But if we look at the actual cash Dow chart, Tom, it's still in a descending price channel. So, you know, price is likely to go target that level out there. Or And so when I say that level, folks, it's really that descending red channel line and also the horizontal uh, primary trading range line. And that's up at 34.152. So I expect that that's where we will see price get to. The question is, do we close above that? If we do close above that, this is a, a weekly chart that we're looking at. So if we close above that on a weekly basis, it would be hinting at us that we've got a breakout going inside of the, uh, uh, the Dow, or at least we've got a, a real change in trend here. So will that act as resistance? I think it does re react as resistance this time around, Tom. Okay. And the reason is because this is a chart that shows the advanced decline oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange. That is panel number two. And here, when we get above the plus 150 reading, this and that what this is doing, folks, this is looking at the advanced decline line, and it's determining the difference between its 39 and 19 period exponential moving average. So that's a technical reason. For our purposes, you don't need to know the details about how it's computed. You just need to be watching the plus 150 and the minus 150 area. That's where you get into for the general markets, overbought and oversold. So really in a overbought uh, condition right now, and that has to work. So as we're moving up into a significant level of resistance, you know, that descending price channel, that's why I say I don't think that it will bust through it this time. Um, of course, it, it can. But overall, I'd say with regard to the equity markets, they do look like they want to move higher. We should see some kind of pullback or retracement. Maybe it's just a two-day deal out here. And then the market should continue to move higher. If there's new information that gets revealed to us, well, subscribers will know about it. Uh, folks that listen to the uh, Trader's Ed show in the morning, you know, we'll, we'll certainly make them aware of that. Right, let's move on to gold here. You were talking about gold. You were talking about the large consolidation that it's been in. If we take a look at its 54-year uh, cycle out here, March has really been a thorn in gold's side. If you take a look at it, it's been the overall worst performing month, followed then by June, which is not the best, and then a little bit in October. But right now, we're into April. We've got gold that's performing well. Here, Tom, you know, I don't have really an overbought reading out there. We just have that large consolidation, that large range, the top of its profile, something for us to take a look at. And then gold, if we take a look at gold and the other major currencies out here, it's hit new all-time highs in the month of uh, February. Okay. And that bodes really well for gold priced in dollars. It says we will make new all-time highs at some point in time. Doesn't, you know, invite us to the party, tell us when. That's where you and I have to use our, our, our technical knowledge to identify where that's at out here. But gold is, is very strong. Um, a little bit about the newsletter. We don't talk much about the newsletter during this segment. During the segment, the first section of the newsletter is always providing key areas to watch uh, intraday out here. So it's kind of like the play-by-play. -play. And this morning, it was looking at the 60-minute time frame charts, which each had topping patterns. We provide. I provided the subscribers. This really helps the day traders or anybody just trying to navigate and understand what the markets are communicating to us. Sure. So I, I start. I start the letter off that way. Then we go into showing the current market conditions. And this is for multiple time frames. All 
anyone has to do, and this is the primary, this is every sector in the S&P 500, the popular ETFs, the equity futures, uh, other futures that are out there, and it helps you to identify exactly what the market condition is. So this is really helpful for managing your longer term portfolios that identify support and resistance from a daily standpoint, identifies where there's tops and bottoms out there. So a ton of information, as you say, the third section lays out the daily message of the primary markets, Tom, which includes basically this section where I tell people exactly what these instruments are doing, where they're headed to, and the reasons why. Huge, absolutely huge. Folks, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. When the to newsletter, you're going to see Master and Probability on the right-hand side. Hit it, and you are off to the races. Steve, you have a great one, a safe one. Of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow. The Dow Industrials are up 330. Nasdaq's down uh, 57. S&Ps are up 14. We'll come right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is right now trading up 335. Nasdaq's down 53. S&P's up 15. If we go inside the Dow and take a look at the strength, it's no doubt going to be the oil stocks. That's for sure. Uh, Point-wise out here, let's see what we have. You got uh, United Health. That's the, that's the winner. That's pretty wild, actually. United Health, uh, 146 points they're putting into it. Um, look at that move, man. Uh, Chevron, um, 50 points, Visa, 20, Big Mac, 20, Merck, 19. Taken away from it is uh, Salesforce, minus 20, Microsoft, minus 10. Inside the MDX 100, the strength versus the weakness. You have uh, Diamond Energy is up 7%. Uh, you got uh, Baker Hughes up 3.5%. Dollar Tree up 3.5%. Moderna up 3 and a quarter. Taken away from it. Tesla's down 6%. You get JD off 3.5%. Uh, 
And if we go over to uh, it's Tesla, let's go take a look at Tesla. So um, if what Elon Musk just did out here today, folks, okay, um, this is a different issue. But uh, so Tesla, you know, bottom line is backing down with some volume. And they come out with good numbers. So when you come out with good numbers and you're backing down with some volume, that's not a good uh, setup. You know, so I suspect that there's, there's more sellers up at this level. But, you know, you look back three months ago, Tesla was at 109, you're at 194. What Elon did today on, um, on Twitter, he put his Dogecoin dog up. Um, and the bottom line is that they went from, what, six cents to nine cents. <laughs> He's always doing something, man. I mean, that, that, that is the reality, which is just a, a mind screw up. SMH. Let's go look at the SMHs out here. So SMHs right now, you got the low for the year is 166. The high is 270. We're trading at 261. Okay, so here are the high for the last six months. Yeah, it's going to, let's see. Yeah, this is going to need more action than this. This is, this is coming, you're coming right into the monster downdraft from November. So you're going to need a lot. You can see this volume characteristic. Um, it's quite a bit, you know. So most times when you see something like this happen, well, it took out, it took out a swing, though. It took out a swing. It's good. This, this will need more, more cost to get to higher price. You can see what's basically snapping it it's uh january 26th january 26th on the way down that's when the, everyone was bailed there's 53 million shares there so it'll take a little bit more than that to well it's good meaning it'll take more of a sideways move building cars having uh, a volume acceleration coming up into that level then you can basically blow that level away we go take a look at uh amazon see where amazon is out here Sideways move, no big deal there. Google, that's going up on light volume. The XLE, we know that the, you had the pop up in oil. So the XLE has some volume here. You're coming into the last swing point. Last swing point was 87.69. We're at 86. 91. Now, this is the one that was going to get pretty interesting, and, and the reason is this. Because of the way that we came up here and you haven't blown this away yet, it's, it's, a, it's a problem. That's, that's the bottom line. Let's go to Michael in Portland. Hey, Michael, what's going on? Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, like you, you, you've been going through all the charts of all the, um, you know, the four horsemen, all the triple Qs and stuff. Um, does your Bloomberg terminal... Uh, post the 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 individual stock trend levels. Okay, like I know you've got trend readings on the uh, on the indices. Okay, and yeah. the, the, do you have access to those? Like I mean, I mean, how many? Like, it seems like the whole world is buying Microsoft, buying um, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, Apple. Okay, so those trend levels must be really really low. As far as I know, there's not a trend on those. There's none. Yeah, I mean, you, you have you have a you have a trend on, you know, no doubt the indices, but I yeah. don't think there's trend on in, in individual equities. Mm -hmm. Are there any other clues you can look at to see whether or not the thing is overbought? Like any other statistics found on the Bloomberg terminal there that give you any clues? Not really, you know. But as you say, they've okay. been buying. I mean, they've been buying the tech stocks big time. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. No. So here's the theory, okay? Say, say out of the blue, uh, J.P. Morgan just, just beats, beats the earnings per share figures next Friday, Friday the 14th. Yeah. And the stocks, the XLF just rockets up. What happens to the triple Q? What happens to what? What happens to the triple Qs if the XLF, the financials, the bank index, takes off to the upside? Well, the Qs are generated by the, you know, not the financials, that's for sure. The S&P, yeah. you know, if the banks take off, which I doubt they will, but if the banks take off, then, you know, you'd see the S&P go much, much higher. 
Yeah, that, but so but the cues are now uh, denoted as being a flight to quality, right? So would traders would they rotate out of the triple cues and into banks? See, I. I, I hear what you're saying, Michael, and, and what he's saying specifically, folks, when you hear on the press all day long, is it risk on, risk off, and okay, when it's risk off, they all, you know, the traders go into um, high growth stocks. Now, the reason for that is because the beta is a higher. So the beta mm -hmm. is the actual, like, if the S&P moves a point, well, you know, Microsoft and, you know, uh, Apple, they, they'll move three or four points. They have a higher betas, okay, than the S&P. So that's what you see. Now, the other side, what's also happening right now, I mean, I think we've peaked out in, in rates. So if we did peak out on rates and that, you know, then, you know, people bailed out of the, the, the growth stocks because the fact of the matter is, is that they bail out as soon as they think rates are going to keep going higher. And if we've peaked out on rates, well, you know, bottom line is that those tech stocks will look a little bit better. And the, and the difference with the tech stocks also is that the tech stocks are still making money hand over fist. Now, you're paying for it, though. The thing that, the thing that is yeah. crazy, like if you look at NVIDIA, folks, you're paying, you're paying $50 for a dollar worth of earnings. You know, but mm -hmm. guess what? That's how, that's what's been going on for a long time. You know, in, in the last six months, NVIDIA went from 108 to 278 again. So, mm -hmm. you know... It is what it is until it isn't. <laughs> so the PEs, the PEs are, are overvalued for Apple, for Google, for Amazon, for, for Netflix and Tesla? Well, not as much. No, Apple's only at 27. And Apple's the king of the road. Think about that. Isn't that wild? Yeah. So they can just keep piling money in, even if the banks rally. Well, what tends to happen if... if, if I suspect that the banks are going to have a tough time, period. And, you know, at this particular point, yeah, I think we want to go to the next swing point, but that's not saying we're, you know, going to be in a bull market here, Michael. So it's been quite, it's been quite, it's been quite a charge higher, though. There's no doubt about that. All right, thank you. Okay, man, have a great one. Have a safe one. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Dow Industrials uh, up 330, 333. Nasdaq's down 43. S&P's up 15. We'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger Zen, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is up 316, NASDAQ's down 50, S&Ps are up uh, 14. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, APLS. So they operate a clinical stage biopharma company um, today's the high, um, lows thirty-three dollars. The high seventy-six, and oh, I see. They, they okay. So they're they're. It looks like they are looking that they might have a biotech firm faced uh, focused on uh, disease and ophthalmology as drawing takeover interest. So if you want to see something cool, folks, okay, this is this is an equity that I'm gonna put this on a monthly and you can see when we talk about price and volume, how this was pushing into its high with extreme volume. You can see the, the high that prior to today was $73. That high was generated out here in uh, July of 2021. Well, you can see in the month of February, you had 44 million pushing into it. Last month you had 37 million, then bang, it blows it away. It takes it out, um, you know, so, you know, we'll see what the interest is, but there's, there's no doubt that the, um, the biotech space in general uh, is still a hot play. And, and what that has to do with here, let's go back to United Health for, for a second, because it has to do with the prices that the pharmaceuticals are basically getting away with. Um, and it's, they're astronomical. <laughs> Um, so United Health, I'm not quite sure why this came off the lows today, but it did. And it had the high volume low at 463. It stayed under the that for three days, tested again the fourth day. And that might be the end of that correction. Let me see. Yeah, what a correction, right? That's a correction went from 558 down at 457, like nothing. Because it, you know, it, it looks to me like this could eat through the uh, aspect of January, but it's, it's got to start. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Here, yeah, check this out. This, is, I, this, this, is, this one's a real trip. Disney, right? right? Watch this. We know this happened to be in Florida, okay? But, so Disney, the lows 84, the highs 139. You probably heard about the aspect that what ended up happening um, is that the state of Florida had put through a new law, and what that did was they, they took over the ready development. So ready development, folks, okay? When Disney first got made, I think it's 50 years ago. It's 50 years ago now. You know, basically controls everything. But check this out. This is... I, I personally love this just because, you know, the aspect between government and corporations is always a trip. Um, so what happened is that right under Ron DeSantis' nose, and because this, this, is, this, this is a personal battle going back and forth, you know. So anyway, this is what happened, right, is that Disney... In the Orlando Sentinel, right, 
put in two notices and then they put an additional notice somewhere else that they were making a land development agreement. And now this is after they put in place, meaning grabbing everything off Disney. They thought they were going to grab everything off Disney. Well, to make a long story short, folks, the bottom line is that there's a new development agreement. And so everything that was put in place by the governor, right, it's not, they don't have, they have zero power at all. For the next 30 years. Now, needless to say, that's going to be fought in court, but it, you know, it, it's one of these deals. Um, Disney's going to come out in front. The politicians go away. The corporations are always there, folks. Okay, and in this particular case, um, you know, the amount of anyway, you get the gist of it. I, the, the big, the biggest gist of it is that they actually did it right under their noses. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. Let's go to uh, Jeff and Philly. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Uh, hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Great. Um, I I see. It, it looks like on Friday morning the non-farms payroll is due to come out. I saw it on two different economic calendars, but the equity markets are going to be closed, uh, w uh, and that seems like really unusual. And I was wondering, you know, first of all. Do I have that right? But and secondly, if I do, is there going to be an effect on the markets on Thursday or Monday? It, you know, knowing that the NFP is coming out with with the markets closed. Yeah, I'd have to. I'll have to check on that, uh, Jeff. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I was checking on it this afternoon. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Because because uh, I believe. Yeah, because let's see. Yeah, you know, it could come out because I, I, what happens is this, is that I believe that, you know, so Good Friday, the market is closed, but it's not a federal holiday. So I can see that, you know, the Don Farm payrolls will come out and, you know, that the market's closed and, you know. So let's say that's true. What, what do you think, how do you think the market will handle that? Where, it would be on Monday. Go flat on Thursday or? Yeah, the, the the response to that would be on Monday. No, I would say the response to that really would, quiet on. Thursday, I'm sorry, what? I guess. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Jeff? Yeah, and I guess on Thursday everything will get really quiet. Low liquidity. People will probably taking off. Anyway, yes, and I think and it will anyway because it's a three day weekend. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, for yeah. sure. And then okay. you have. I'm not sure when Passover is, but I believe that's that's right now too, right? I think yeah, it is. This week, yeah. I'll, I'll Google it, but I, I I believe this is you know you got you got all those things happening, which which slow things down for sure. So you think Monday will be an explosive day, like a big gap one way or the other? Um, well, window dressing would be over. So yeah, markets can move for sure. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Especially after you know I, I I have a feeling that what you just said that that's the way that shakes out that. You know, the, and the thing that's wild, folks, is that the reason, so check this out. When you look at the aspect, if you're wondering why the markets are closed on Good Friday, well, the markets were actually started by a lot of Irish Catholics <laughs> under a tree when you go back, okay? Um, and that's, that's how that got done. <laughs> so that, you know, has nothing to do with the federal government now. And that then, you know, so I can see the federal government basically, yeah, you know, coming out with that number, but yet the markets are closed. So that's how we end up getting a holiday there. So maybe get something like a, like an option straddle on on Thursday when things are, are quiet, you know, anticipating a big move on Monday. You could probably get a straddle relatively cheaply and to get a big move. Uh, yeah, they just settle down. What Jeff's talking about, folks, is that if you can get things to settle down, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and when the way the market's, you know, Working right now, it looks like you can put one on. I mean, you know, basically, you, 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 there hasn't been volatility out here today at all. Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, man. Very cool. Have a great Thank one. You. Have a safe one. Yeah. Dow Dow Industrials right now up 316. Folks, Nasdaq down 45. S and P's up 14. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now up 300 to get the NASDAQ down 46. S&Ps are up 13. And uh, to uh, also, Jeff... Uh, and thanks, Z, for giving me a heads up there. So you're going to have the futures that um, will open Thursday night, reopen Thursday night at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m., and then they close, close at noon on Friday. So there will be action in the futures, um, but the option market will not be open, just if you're doing that straddle, just so you know. Um, markets out here, bottom line is that we take a look at the SPY first, which you're going to see... Uh, you know, you get light volume on the SPY, but the bottom line is that what you have out here is, you know, you're going to close almost at the high of the day. Yeah, it's 410, and, you know, this 418 is just hanging out here. So I suspect, you know, even in the next couple of days, it looks to me like uh, they're going to run it. Because what you're going to have is that it's a week that a lot of people are on vacation, okay? It'd be a thin market. You know, you're off Friday. It's the beginning of the month. Good time to run it. And... If, if I'm correct in the assessment, what you'll end up seeing is that as you run to the top of these swing points, you'll have the contraction of volume. See, I can, on the queues, it's quite a run on the queues. So this is going to be really interesting on the queues because the, the next swing point in the queues is 334, man. And we're only at 320. So that's quite a move. And, yeah, that's, that's the number, man. I mean, there's, there's nothing in between it. It took out the 312. You're at eight points over the 312. There's no reason it can't get up to that 334. And 
it really shouldn't hit real flack until like, yeah, 334, it's the same number. Watch this, look at this, it's the same number. That how we, the biggest volume on the way down, folks, you know, outside of what it was already taken out, is 334, and that's also the swing point. So I suspect, guess what, you know, and what will be interesting there is to see that is actually saying that this dollar is going to back down and break, break down. Because what the dollar is, the dollar didn't hold price today. It's coming into its strength. It hasn't got into it yet, but it looks like it's going to. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out. The bull can run you over. And thank God, there's always another trade. Health tab is in prosperity. Have a great night. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Yeah, look at him, folks. Building.